Good morning, everybody. FSC Trucking. Ah, I woke up this morning in Ohio. We're at the mile mark 126, exit 126 in Ohio on 70. The TA, I was able to wrangle up a parking space in the kitty corner. Well, the truck that was over there is gone. Well, he's still there. And I just was able to squeeze in this little triangle, not parking space, because I'm not paying to park in reserve. Yikes. Wow, that sun's bright. All right, what do we got today? Well, here we go. We got one of these big bad boys again. Get back up and get it all in film. That is a gigantic feeder mixer. So apparently what they do is they take a wheel loader and they throw different feed inside. And there's augers inside that mix it all up. And then out the back and or out the front, the feed comes out. So I guess you're driving down the field, you open the back door, it comes out that little the hydraulic actuator. And then in the front, I'm guessing that's how it works. In the front, you can uh, have it come out. See the hydraulic door? That'll open up and then this chute will go one way or the other to spit it out this way or spit it out that way. Farm implements made easy, boys and girls. Courtesy of your humble host, Steve Fezcheck. There we are. All right, well, that's all I know about it. All I know is it's a Triolet Solo Mix. Right there, see? Now, let me tell you something. It's got a little bit of weight to it. Comes in at uh, 18,000 kilograms. But that is in pounds, I'm not sure. Either way, it's a permit load. We're permitted for 40, 40, and 12. That we don't have to worry about the weight. And we're good to go. That's how we're running it today. So this is going up to Wisconsin. This is kind of a regular load we do. Of course, it always seems like for me, I always wind up with them over a holiday weekend, which this last weekend was Easter, but you know, whatever. No, it doesn't. Uh, it's not always that way. Well, it is always that way for me. It seems that way. Either way, that's our load back. I'm not sure what we're going to do once we get back, boys and girls, to be honest. Um, see, Orwell's starting to eat a bunch of crap here and there, and we were going to get ready to take off. Well, we are going to take off end of this month. Go bring Matthew his motorcycle, and Sean's going to take a ride back up from the south to Wisconsin. We're going to put a lift kit in his Jeep. And then uh, he's going to drive his Jeep back home. That's the plan. But uh, I've been running, running, running real hard, real solid. And to be honest, I need to get crap done at home. So, ugh, it's a little chilly night, a little chilly morning, but that's all right. What is it like, mid? Yeah, it's mid-April now, so there we are. So there's the parking space I got. I'll show you what we did. So there's a truck parked there. It's still parked there. I was able to squeeze it right in there. So that's right, because half the lot is, you know, reserved, aka pay you 20 bucks. I'm sorry, boys and girls. We pay these truck stops enough. I've had it. So there is that. However, this TA, for whatever reason, this one ain't that bad price wise for fuel. I may actually have to pull in and get fuel. I may as well. Probably have to stop twice. It's 397 here, cash price, so that's not that bad. By the way, I'm not doing that pay to park reserve scam. That's that was a scam. Anybody notice the day that the ELD mandate hit? That's exactly when literally half of the entire parking lots went to pay lots, except for uh, the loves. They're one of the only ones that didn't do that crap yet. There might be one or two, but over, overarching, they don't, which is good. So I'm impressed with that, to be honest. Uh, Love's got their problems. Don't get me wrong. That happened in a few previous videos, though. But, you know, nonetheless, they seem to be, of all the crappy ones, they're the best crappy one. Let's just put it like that. Clearly, FSC Trucking is probably never going to get a truck stop endorsement. But that's okay. I got to keep it real and honest with you guys. Now what I'm going to do is... Shut down the green APU that's keeping me in the cab nice and warm. That's keeping Orwell's engine nice and warm. Sorry, boys and girls, no more real grindy and terrible cold starts. 
because uh, even in this temperature, Orwell would complain a little bit. So let's go ahead and fire them up, get on down the line. There you go, look how easy that starts. Alrighty, well, let's let them air up. Let them do its thing. We're gonna take care of uh, paperwork. Put everything away inside. I was editing, so I gotta put the computer away. And then we'll get on down the line. Probably get fuel for stuff. All right, let's hit it. boys and girls how about you hit that like and subscribe bigger just like that knock your orange juice over so hard you do it shows you care shows you hate orange juice <laughs> all right let's get out of here lights on scrolls on Over chicken from last night. Got my orange juice. Basically good to go. Whichever. Those are through Illinois. 
Illinois before the sun goes down, we're good as far as delivering in the morning. We could run Wisconsin at night. I can stay at the customer's lot, detach, and then unload first thing. sense for me to not run another one. I'm still waiting on parts for my trailer which is getting old.
in right in front of that straight truck and almost didn't make his exit. Almost wound up in the grass. wondered how that how that ever play out public utilities commission puco p-u-c-o it's like the d-o-t I, I didn't know trucks were a utility and they almost like i remember I, when i first started seeing them years and years and years ago these being like little minivans and you imagine something like that trying to pull you over and you're gonna call 911. You'd be like, "Hey, somebody's impersonating a cop trying to pull me over." Turns out it's Puco. Like I don't know if you didn't know better, would you? You know, would you stop for that? Would you be hesitant to stop for like this, like minivan with flashing lights? Everybody knows what a police car looks like.
PUCO, Public Utilities Commission. Yeah, that's a real thing, boys and girls. And you saw the car. I mean, what was that? Like a... Like, I, I must say, like a Ford-type crossover. Not even SUV. More like minivan. I mean, that's something like a... That's something like a broke soccer mom would drive. Like... Would, I, that's just, I, I remember saying that years ago with the minivans. If that was pulling me over, I don't know if I'd pull over. I'd be like, I think I'm going to call the cops and say, hey, someone's impersonating a cop because a minivan is not a cop car and it's acting like it is. See, now you just know better because I told you. But, wow. I haven't seen that in a long time. Where were we? Maybe it was at the truck show. I was talking to another driver about that. I, honestly, I had thought, because I have not seen one in a long time, I had honestly thought they had disbanded that thing. Like how many different forms of police do you need in this country to regulate trucks? It's like you got the state troopers, all the other local troopers, county police, then you got DOT, motor well that's motor carrier, and then you got public utilities commission. I mean that sounds like somebody that like changes the street lights buys the wrong one so they turn purple after a while I, that's what you would think right I'll try to look it up when I edit this video I'll try to get you more information on it that's interesting to say the least Enough about that. On with the day. Turns out I would have saved a little bit of money had I came out here to get fuel, but. time to get off the highway and get back on and just fuel up where I already woke up, right? That's kind of how I see it. Can't win them all the time. I've learned to sniff them out to cheaper fuel. Obviously, I share that with you. I share that with all y'all. All y'all. stops in the last handful of years and that's good because the parking situation is getting real bad I'm hoping with more competition that the TAs, Petros and Pilots are going to knock it off with their bullcrap reserve parking scam Now with TA getting bought up majority by BP, and then I saw on uh, might have been on CDL Life for Freightways that uh, the Freightways or Freight Waves. I gotta look up anyway. I looked up, saw that uh, Haslam family is gonna still maintain 20% ownership in uh, Pilot Fly and J deal there. So I made a video. I mentioned that on a video a while back. It was a little bit of 
of shaking up going on in the truck stop world, I guess. Big finance, big money there, so it's well above my pay grade to understand it all exactly, but the way I look at it is the more the merrier. Because you're starting to see a lot more places like that new uh, that compass out there in Indiana where I stop a lot. They're a lot cheaper than the Loves, the TA, the Petro, all of that. The Thornton's down there. Um, I personally, I think Bucky's is missing the boat that they don't have semi trucks. I mean, we don't need a grocery store with 80,000 gas pumps, you know, but I don't know. I guess it's working for them though, right? I think they're missing the boat with the, with the semis. I, I hope that the these off-brand offshoots will uh, wet the market down enough to where the prices come down to make it so these big truck stop chains don't tack on 50, 60, 70 a dollar a gallon more than need be for absolutely no reason. Gas prices seem to be pretty uniform. You, know, you go to one gas station, it's $3.99. Go to another across the way, it's $3.98, $3.99, $3.97 maybe. And that's across the board. With diesel, it's all over the place. Like just back there, $4.29, I mean, at the Speedway. Fuel Mart had it for $3.79. What? Like 50 cents a gallon difference? Why? That makes no sense. I guess they're just assuming that people in diesel trucks won't pay attention. So what do you do if you got like a Cummins powered ramp or a power stroke in your Ford or a Cummins in, you know, something else? I don't know, you get the point. Not everything's semi truck. I don't get it. I truly do not understand that gas station diesel fuel market price structure. Now, I did fuel up with the TA, so now when I get my settlement next week, I'll look to see what I paid versus what it actually was. And we'll see if we do have a fleet discount, because when I asked up there, nobody in the office at the time knew or could find out. I wasn't going to bother to hire ups on it, so um, I guess I'll find out that way. Alrighty, we're just about done with Ohio. Next stop, Indiana.
Aries in Aries is more interesting than six wheeler. Alrighty, boys and girls. Stopped at the Loves to get something to eat. I have done that. Excellent. Get that done. Get that done. Let's get out of here before they line up in front of the island here. came through so that's good. Georgia. 
Ben's got to be there Monday. So, most of the way I can run on the weekend, so we'll load Thursday, take it home, which one I'll get some work done. Orwell basically needs an oil change, and uh, I want to address the issue on my passenger side cargo box, or Peterbilt calls it a luggage box. I want to address that. I got parts for that on order. So I have to kind of fix it temporarily until my new parts come in. It's always something. Believe it or not, there, what I need is a hinge and pull cable. Those are still available brand new, believe it or not, from Peterbilt. But I gotta wait on them a little, so... I have enough spare parts to make it functional for now. I got them held down by bungee cords right now, so... It ain't pretty, but it works for now. It's the dumb stuff like that you have problems with when you have old trunks like this. Whatever, it is what it is. So, get Orwell oil change, take care of that. And we'll basically do a full service on them, basically. And then run the striker, and then that'll be that until I take some time off. It'll be right after I get back, so. By the time I'm leaving, my parts for the trailer hopefully will be in. That'll keep Terry busy. While I'm gone, so get the trailer put together. I'll get my trailer back. 